How's it going guys, Agent here, and today is September 4th, the official release date for Marvel's Avengers. Today I just wanted to give some tips for the people who are going to be playing this game for the first time, because I have been playing this game non-stop as soon as I got early access back on the 1st, and I wanted to share what I believe are the best steps to take when playing this game for the first time. Quick disclaimer, I will be avoiding story related spoilers for you guys, so I'll be looking at this in-game menu a lot since some of the gameplay and dialogue in the actual missions I mentioned can spoil some things. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who have played the beta or are familiar with the gear system of looter type games like Destiny, your jaw might have just dropped a little seeing the levels on my Black Widow here. I reached the max character level, which is level 50, and I almost reached the max power level of 150. But as you can see, I could only get it up to 139 for now. That is because the soft cap for the power level is 130, but I won't go too in depth into that because it can get a little confusing. I might just save that for another video focusing on the end game aspect of things. But the reason I threw those numbers out there is because I feel like that is the end game goal for a majority of players in one way or another. You're gonna want stats similar to those if you want to get all the skills that your favorite character has to offer, build them in certain ways to help your friends out such as focusing on all damage or going for support, and to be strong enough to keep up with all the cool updates that the devs will roll out in the future. So without further ado, let's get into this. So my first tip is a pretty obvious one, but you should play and finish the campaign first. Not only is it a pretty good story that's action packed and cinematic like the movies, but it'll also help you out with the multiplayer since you have to play as all of the different characters in the campaign. So it'll get both your character and power level up for each of them. And overall, just to avoid the spoilers that the multiplayer has. It'll also give you some cosmetics for the characters. Legendary gear, which is the yellow tier of gear. Uh, the rarity goes white, green, blue, purple, yellow, and exotic and it'll give you some exotic major artifacts. Keep that one in mind. Um, this one is the one I have, it's called the Tactagon. One of the ones that you get from the campaign, you also get this one from the campaign, the Sacred Norn Stone of Lethal Will. Um, but yeah, now some people don't want to do the campaign. I get that, it is pretty buggy after all, and I personally had a lot of issues with cutscenes dropping a lot of frames and people not loading in. But if your goal is to max out your character, which I'm assuming is the reason why you want to hop straight into multiplayer, you're still gonna have to do the campaign. I know, it sucks if that's not what you want. But the reason is because of those exotic major artifacts I mentioned before. You need these in order to boost your power to the higher levels. Each time you upgrade these major artifacts, you get one additional point to your power level. So since you can upgrade it up to 10 times, that's plus 10 power levels that you're missing out on if you don't have it. Currently, mine is at plus 5, so if I had um, enough resources to upgrade it one more time, I would bring it up to plus 6 and I would increase my power level from 139 to that 140. Now, you're probably wondering why can't I just get these major artifacts in the multiplayer? Unfortunately, the only way to get them in the multiplayer is by completing certain mission chains. So completing a series of missions online. One of the requirements for the mission chains that will give you the artifact is to complete the iconic missions for all of the characters. So these iconic missions are kind of like character specific backstory sort of missions for each of the characters that you can do online. Here's one for Thor, it involves him going to Scandinavia and doing, you know, some character specific things for him. So like I said before, you have to do these for all of the characters including Miss Marvel, aka Kamala Khan, 
but one of the requirements for her iconic mission is to literally complete the campaign. It kind of makes sense since these iconic missions touch on the backstory of the character, and there's no better backstory for Miss Marvel than how she became an Avenger in the campaign. Um, I wish I could show you, but I haven't even reached that point myself yet. Maybe I'll get a screenshot from one of my friends who has. But yeah, there's only two major artifacts that you can get in multiplayer and they're locked behind the completion of the campaign. So the fastest way is to just do the campaign and get the two artifacts that you can get from them. Um, I showed you them before. I wouldn't even be this high yet if I didn't do the campaign first. So just do the campaign, you can bang it out in like 5-6 to six hours if you really wanted to. It can honestly be a lot worse. Now next tip is that after you complete the campaign, before you do anything else, talk to the faction leaders and pick up your daily assignments. Like its name says, these are missions that refresh daily and there's usually 8 small ones that require you to do things like defeat a certain number of enemies or gain a certain amount of XP. And one big one that is an entire mission in of itself that requires you to go in with a team, complete objectives, and defeat a boss at the end. The smaller ones are easy, you usually complete them just by doing what you would normally do in multiplayer. So it's, a, it's good to get into the habit of collecting all of them every day before you do anything. The rewards for doing your dailies are faction XP. So you can level up your factions like S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Chimera which we're at right now. And another faction in the Utah Badlands that I won't mention because it's a spoiler. And yeah, you can even get more rewards like gear and resources for reaching certain levels in your faction. But the big reward for doing your dailies is this resource right here. Polycoron. These are the resources that you need to upgrade those exotic major artifacts I mentioned before. I know, it seems like everything revolves around these guys. But that just goes to show how important these things are for increasing your power level. Plus, some of them can have pretty busted perks that'll increase your damage or put certain effects or elements on your attacks. Third and probably final tip because I just realized how much explaining I did. <laughs> is to just have fun. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> but it's honestly not too far off from what the real tip is. The real tip is for the first character that you're dedicated to and want to level up all the way, focus on the mission chains. This one right here, um, it's called Reigning Supreme. It's a pretty long ongoing mission chain that basically guides you throughout the whole multiplayer since it's easy to get confused on what to do next, and it also has you play through every type of mission that the multiplayer has to offer. From early game stuff like the harm rooms, to end game stuff like aim hives. You can see that I'm not even done doing them, I'm currently on step 4 of this mission chain. Just by doing this and all the other mission chains that aren't showing up because I did them already, you'll constantly keep getting better and stronger gear. You get a lot of purple and yellow gear from these. You also get tons of XP from doing these, so there isn't really a reason to mindlessly grind enemies to get your character level up. I personally don't think you need to go into certain missions, run to a nearby chest to get gear, quit, restart the mission, and do that over and over again to get your power level up. I feel like that will be boring for both you and your friends that you might bring along for the ride, Plus, you'll be missing out on all of these awesome missions that you can play. And like I said before, you have to do these mission chains anyway to access endgame content, so you might as well bang them out early and lighten the load a bit. Just do the mission chains, explore the world within the missions to find hidden chests, vaults, and special enemies that drop good gear, and you should be all good to go. But you're free to play however you want, so if you want to grind your character level right away, I recommend doing Harm Challenge Room 1 since it's not too long, not hard, and each run should level up your character 1-2 to two times. As for grinding power levels, I'm not 100% sure what the best mission is for that. I'll be figuring that out when I start my second character, probably Miss Marvel. 
but the one I see a lot on YouTube is the mission called Stark Realities. There's a shield vault all the way on the left side of the map that you can go to. And the concept is grab the gear from that, quit, and redo the process. I'm sure if you search Avengers Stark Realities gear on YouTube, you'll find dozens of videos on it. Um, oh, speaking of gear, make sure to dismantle any gear that are weak and outdated to get upgrade materials from them. So I'll demonstrate it right now. I think I have like, yeah, I, I have like this power level 90 artifact that I'm realistically never going to use, never going to touch. I have this perfectly good, you know, power level 131 over here. Um, I'm still trying to find a better one that I can upgrade to 140. But yeah, you just come over to the one you want to dismantle, hold triangle, get rid of that. I got some fragments, some plasma, some, uh, what does that say? Uru. <laughs> but yeah, those are things that um, I'm going to have to use to upgrade things that I actually want to upgrade. Again, you're free to play however you want, but from my experience, I think it's best to hoard these upgrade materials until around power level 110. That's when I started to realize that higher level gear wasn't dropping as frequently. I don't know if that's just me, but through all of my hoarding of upgrade materials, I realized that I had enough to fully upgrade purple and yellow gear only three times. So three different occasions. Um, so for example, Imagine if I had a piece of gear that had 110 power. Uh, it has to be purple or yellow, by the way, because those are the only ones you can upgrade 10 power levels. Anything below that can only be upgraded 5 power levels. As you see with this blue one, um, it, it says next boost 129 power is 0 out of 5. But the, the legendary one, the yellow one, you can upgrade it um, 10 times. I actually fully upgraded this one but it got replaced by this better one that I have. Um, anyway, gear with 110 power. I fully upgrade it up to 120 power. Then I play a few missions and if I'm lucky, I get a piece of gear that's also 120 power. But the difference is that this new piece of gear has a clean slate and can still be fully upgraded too. So I still have enough upgrade materials just for two more full upgrades. I boost that new 120 power gear to 130, which is actually what probably happened with this piece of gear I have right now. I wear this 130 power gear, but 130 is the soft cap, like I mentioned before, for power level meaning that regular missions won't drop anything above 130. So how do you get to 140 and finally 150 power level? The only way as of right now is to upgrade 130 power gear with a clean slate and upgrade it to 140. So that's what I was doing with this one. I got this one at 130 with a clean slate. I upgraded it seven times until it was 137 power but even with all my hoarding i ran out of upgrade materials because the amount you need to upgrade just gets higher and higher there will definitely have to be end game missions that they're going to add in that'll be super hard but we'll reward you with 140 power gear so we can finally boost that to 150 the hard cap the max Again, I'll talk about all that endgame stuff in another video. But yeah, those are my tips. It can be very confusing, so please drop a comment if you have any questions at all. I won't take up any more of your time. I'll just leave you with this. I hope you have a bunch of fun playing this game. I know I have. It's a bit buggy at times. I hope they fix those soon. But this game had so much more content than I was expecting. I was pleasantly surprised. And we're just scratching the surface. There's so many more characters and missions and stories that they can release. And I can definitely see this game having a long lifespan that'll carry over into next gen. But yeah, that's it for me today. As always, thumbs if you liked it, sub if you're new, comment if you want me to talk with you. I'm Agent, you're awesome, those are facts, and I'll be back in the next one. Peace.